Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. Last time, we made our way through most of the Mountain of Woe, and we learned a bunch of nice triple techs in the process. I'm not going to go over them all again. There they are. Chrono is involved in all of those. Go figure. He's required to be in the party, and he's required for all triple techs. Anyway, uh, these are my setups, even though I showed them last time. Just real quick. And yeah, we were... Uh, we were told someone was being held here, the Guru of Life. We've seen one of those before, only once. Big cage. It was a barrier last time we saw it. And it's gone. Holy crap. Giga Gaia! Two-hand attack! Dark Plasma Shadow! As you might be able to figure, this guy can be a little bit of a pain in the ass, especially because, well, considering his hands are doing stuff right now, yeah, they're powerful. Quite powerful, in fact. Alright. First things first, I can't remember how I'm supposed to steal from any of these things. <laughs> This is one thing I never steal in this fight, and I probably should. Usually, as, as long as you have Ayla, you should be stealing. I'm assuming that just doesn't work, but I could be wrong. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Uh, so let's try the head real quick, and then we'll try the other arm just real quick, just to actually see if it works, or if you could miss. But yeah, the longer that the, uh, the main arms are alive, the more you're going to get smacked around with a bunch of damage. And they like to double up their attacks. Now, the ideal way of dealing with this is, of course, to use one of our fancy new triple attacks. But that's not the only way of dealing with it. There's actually two really effective strategies for taking down these arms by dealing a lot of damage pretty quickly. And if I had Marley, I would have cast Haste Array. Okay, we got a speed tab from you, so that's probably a good idea to uh, pick up. Definitely a good idea. Ow! Stop beating the crap out of me! Uh, you know what? Where is my mid-tonic for Robo? And we'll try the other arm just on the off chance. Now, I have a feeling you just can't get anything from that. But there are two really good strategies for taking them down. One is Falcon Hit. You do a lot of damage with Falcon Hit. And of course, the, uh, the hands will also heal the head. So this is one strategy to do a lot of damage to these guys, because as you can see, it does quite a bit of damage, hits them both. Easy way to take them down uh, both at the same time, which is kind of what you want to do in this fight. The other way, and one of the ways I really like working on this fight, is to bring specifically these three in for their triple tech. Because their triple tech works quite well in this fight. Twister! And I'm going to have to heal. <laughs> Ouch! That's a lot of damage, especially to poor Robo with his low magic defense. But yeah, this is why we have our characters set up to deal magical damage, because, well... It's really nice in this fight. All right. Robo. Heal everybody, please. Um, the rest of this fight really isn't anything to worry about. There's nothing in particular you can do to do crap tons of damage against this guy, from what I recall. So we'll just play around with some of our uh, techs here. That did terrible damage. As you can see, commencing restoration, he's going to eventually recover his uh, other pieces there. So here's Uzi Punch, which is pretty decent by itself. Oh, right. We learned this, didn't we? Cost 20 MP. I'm going to save that. We're going to do uh, a little bit of this here. And Tailspin, I'm selecting it here. Tailspin is another one of those abilities that only works around the character, so we can't use that unless Ayla is close to the enemy she's trying to target with. It. Uh, that being the case, she doesn't have a lot else that she can do here. Now, he does revive his hands. And let's see. 
The only other thing we could do that I don't think we've shown off thus far, we might not have seen Boogie. Boogie inflicts stop on all enemies. Um, it's rarely useful, but it does have a couple of uses. Uh, spin Kick, I believe we've seen that? I could be wrong. But anyway, let's get Twister going again. It is the best way to take this guy out, because I don't think he has particularly high magic defense. And this just allows us to do lots of damage for a very little MP cost. And it does enough damage at my level to take this guy right out real fast. In fact, that it's probably not the most effective, but it's definitely the most efficient as far as uh, MP cost goes to just repeatedly use it against this guy over and over and over again. There are definitely ways to do more damage than that, though. Um, throw up a heal beam while we're at it. And do another Confuse, and we'll do Cat Attack, because I have nothing better. The The sad thing about uh, Ayla is she's got some really powerful techs, but against larger boss enemies, because her last two physically attacking techs are Tailspin and Rock Throw, Rock Throw doesn't work against large opponents, Tailspin only works if you're in the right area, her single techs don't have a lot of use outside of obviously charm. But anyway, we took this guy down. We got some more uh, experience, tech points, and all that good stuff. Wonder who was in that cage that looked like Ozzy's barrier. Well, I'll be. we met before? Um, how many times have we met you now? More importantly, can you tell me anything about the Ocean Palace? Queen has degenerated to that degree. The more energy the Mama Machine absorbs, the further the Queen degenerates. Her spirit has been stolen by the infamous Immortal Lavos. We must flee! The seal has been broken. The mountain will collapse. This was one of my favorite cutscenes as a kid just because it was so different compared to everything else that you see in this game. The mountain's gonna fall. It's gonna float away. Oh. Yeah, you don't get a lot of uh, world map changing uh, cutscenes in this game. It's not like there's much to that one. In fact, I often mix up this cutscene, this rather short cutscene, with another cutscene that we get later on. But we won't get into that. Lavo sleeps deep underground while consuming the energy of the planet. If the Mamma machine is brought closer to him, he may awaken. He must hurry before it's too late. Shal is here. I wonder what she's doing here. Why have you come to such a miserable place? Yeah, if you remember when we were speaking to all the people around here, uh, the kids had said that uh, Shala does indeed come here. Stop degrading yourselves. The enlightened ones were once the same as you. The only difference is we're under Lavos's control. What a filthy hovel. To this day, I don't know what a hovel is. I could look it up, but... Um, yeah, I'm guessing it's, you know, an, a, a place of residence, a home, a hole in the wall, whatever. But yeah, it's just a very strange vocabulary choice. <laughs> After the mountain of woe fell, I thought I would find you here. Is it safe for you to leave the palace? That's a good question. That no longer matters. The Ocean Palace is now operational. And I'd throw in a Star Wars clip about a battle station being fully operational, but I'm not going to interrupt this music. 
not happening. And all is lost. But without me, the Mamma machine won't work. Turn my back on that evil device. Now, if you recall, we talked to a number of people in, well, in Zeal in general, both the uh, in Hasa and Kajar and then Zeal Palace itself. And somewhere along the way, someone gave us this piece of information that Shala has powers more powerful than her mother. And I believe someone had said that Janus had no power at all, uh, him being an adoptive uh, son of the Queen. So without Shala, it's probably true that the Mammoth Machine might not work if the Queen doesn't have the power to manipulate it herself. You've kept the Skyway open, which if you recall when we came back, it was closed. You must stop my mother. Hey, my music! Why don't we keep it right there? Oh, you. What do you want, Dalton? Your presence is required elsewhere. Leave her alone. I'm reminded of a line from the Spider-Man animated series from the 90s where Spider-Man ended up being really old in an episode and he went and said exactly that and was surprised at his own voice. I think it was a, a Vulture episode in the Neogenic Nightmare saga somewhere. I think that was season two. I love that series. Silence, old man. Ow! Well, well there goes that. Okay. Queen's children all seem to have a problem with authority, don't they? It means nothing to you, but if you deliver her dead to the Queen, I have a feeling things aren't going to go well for you. I'm always curious by that cutscene. He goes and he does his little pose, and I'm assuming what happens is he's either knocking people out or teleporting away. But everyone, all the NPCs disappear except our party and Dalton. Uh, Scala might have been there too, but... Uh... Without sorcery, we can't do a thing. Melchior. I'm all right. Yeah, we should probably save her. She, you know, is the one who saved us way back. Of course, that's not that far away. Even coming from you, Melchior. The queen is allowed to fulfill her scheme. All life as we know it is doomed. You're willing to challenge the Queen. You've done so much for us, and I don't even know your names. Now we'll help you. Regardless of who you bring, they all have their own unique dialect, but they get across the same message to Malkyr. Basically saying that you've already helped us plenty of times, and, well, it's our turn to pay you back, and, of course, being past Malchior, he has no idea what's going on. Now, they said that the Guru of Life was uh, the one trapped up there, and Melchior is indeed the Guru of Life. It's made from the same red stone as the Mamma machine. Interesting. With it, you can destroy the machine. And our silent protagonist, he has his moment here. He says absolutely nothing and basically implies, we're going to go kick some ass. Okay. With that being said, uh, do you, does anybody say anything else? Sir Janus headed toward the Skyway to save Miss Scala. Is she alive? No. The Guru of Time and Reason are missing. So yeah, we found the Guru of Life, but there are two Gurus left. The Guru of Time and the Guru of Reason. And I was already in here. 
of those two, we don't really know anything. wonder if that'll come into play later. Don't know if anyone else says anything else. I don't usually talk to people multiple times after the, you know, the the base idea. We don't need to talk to you, you'll just make me rest. How could something like this happen? Seems like the evil influence of Lavos to me. Use the Skyway to chase Dalton. Okay. Um... I don't know. You might still be able to fight the beasts. You can't fight the beasts. There's nothing else you can do up here. Um, I'm just going to meet you outside. But yeah, we're... Uh, we now have access to this particular spot and nothing else. So if you wanted to continue to grind against the rubbles, you would have to do that before fighting the boss. Now, before we do anything else, I would... Uh, I neglected to do this before. Uh, but I guess I might as well at least show it off. This is where you land in the Middle Ages. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to jump cut around to the individual chests because, well, the chest that I showed before that we had uh, powered up by coming to the Middle Ages and then got the powered up uh, pr uh, prize for doing it in the present day, we can come back and get the lower powered ones, which I never showed up, uh, never showed off. Oops. Uh, so let's just show real quick the vests. They're weaker on the defense and they only, they absorb 50%. I think it just cuts the damage in, in half. I think that's what it does. But anyway, I already had that. It was already in my inventory. And in the castle, we get the red vest. And in Truce Inn, this is the other one. Of course, this is in the, uh, the town closest to the castle. Contains the blue vest. Okay, we made one more stop here. And I was right. I was hoping that now was the time we got it. We get the final piece of equipment from uh, Tabin here. The Tabin suit. This is a fantastic... Fantastic piece of equipment. Three to speed, fire guard up, way more defense. It's not the uh, the blue mail, but uh, it's still very, very good. What I should do is I should pull the mermaid cap off you, give you maybe the uh, time hat there, and then give the mermaid cap to you to negate some of the water damage you might end up seeing, just because that would be beneficial for you a lot. Um, but yeah, it's I think it's pretty much better at this point. It, it's it's a it's a coin toss with the uh, the tab and helm, but I really like her having some kind of water protection. And yeah, I'm going to go with this party with this setup for a little while here. Go gold stud on Chrono. And the reason for the gold stud on Chrono is, well, we learned that new technique, uh, I believe, last time. And I haven't shown it off yet. The uh, Almighty Luminaire. And it costs 20 MP by default. With gold stud on, it costs 5 MP. Those of you who have played this game know how abusive this combination of, you know, accessory and ability can really be. And this was the reason I made the choice to put all of my magic tabs onto Chrono. Uh, this was always my thought uh, back uh, when I was a kid. Uh, I'll, I'll do one thing real quick here. He's changed forms again. Uh, I'm level 35 and my other characters are 32 and 33. I gave him a shot off screen. It didn't go well for me, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll look at that guy a little later. All right, let's go back to the Dark Ages. One thing I did want to point out, um, now that we're hearing it again, is when we were in the Mountain of Woe, it was a floating island or a floating chunk of rock. We didn't have any music there. And it made perfect sense. 
You know, we're in a floating, you know, rock high above everything else. And yeah, there isn't really much else to, uh, to say about it. We, uh, we learn anything else around here this time? Hmm. But yeah, since it's floating up in the sky like that, a higher altitude, it's much higher chance that it would have, you know, just wind blowing in the background. Uh, I don't think it's a free healing point. Yeah, you're just going to say that again. Strictly forbidden. I don't think this summons anything new this time. But we'll double check, just in case. Oh, excuse me, just in case. It didn't even open the door this time. Huh. I guess they won't let me in anymore. Or is it water leads to wind that leads to, uh... Now, I think you have to flip them all in a row. They can't, you can't just leave one open that you left uh, open by mistake. Yeah, because wind makes fire dance. There we go, yeah. I oopsed. Nope. I'm holding up, but I can't go in the door. It's... For whatever reason, sometimes you get stuck. Yeah. It's my belief too, buddy. Life begins and ends with new. And I'm dragging my feet because there's not really anything else we can do too much today. And I don't want to... Uh, I don't really want to jump forward too fast, and I want to give you another, you know, good opportunity to listen to uh, the awesome music in Zeal. As I said earlier, uh, you know, I would play the game just to get back there, and then, you know, like, I would rush to get back here, and then I would drag my feet around here and listen to the music and talk to the people and battle the news and, you know, all, all just... Pretty much just dragging my feet, if at all possible, just to do as much as I could and spend as much as the much time as I could. And, you know, I've explored every single, you know, square that you can go to in this area, trying to find ways of getting to the Sun Palace down there, trying to get over here. Like, I thought maybe I could get in this forest, try and make my way over to the, uh, the cave over there. Nothing I ever did worked. Here's the blackbird once again. Symbol of how advanced Seal's culture is. Hmm. Well, we've got, uh... We got the ruby knife from Melchior, so we have a new way of dealing with the Mamma Machine, apparently. And if we recall what we heard earlier, the Mamma Machine is uh, being sent, or was going to be sent, to the Ocean Palace. Or at least I think someone said that. I could be wrong. No, no, it was the Ocean Palace that was... Something happened, I can't remember. Hey. Beings that are born of dreams must return to them. The power of Lavos can make hopes and dreams come true. Interesting. This leads to the Mam Machine. Is anybody else? Hey. Mam Machine was moved to the Ocean Palace to obtain the raw energy of Lalos. Yeah, I can't remember if someone said that or if it's just that I knew that already. Yeah. Fortunately, the Mam Machine has been moved. Power is now gone. Yeah, we heard you say that before. Prophet's full of anger and sorrow, huh? Flatlands to mountains, and mountains into oceans. You may find the way. That is, if you could pass eons of time. Hmm. Well, I don't think there's anything that we can find around here. Uh, I never looked at this book. Does this book say anything? No, it does not. Okay, fine. Then we have this one. We have news as guards. Queen took Shallow with her to the Ocean Palace. Finally obtained immortality, huh? Yeah, that looks to be the case. 
Unless I have something to say about it. But that's pretty much all for this one. Next time, we find the answer to that question. What lies beyond? Anyway, that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.